Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another video. Welcome back to Monster Hunter World Iceborne. And today, I'm going to be sharing with you the build that I used to hunt Fatalis. Now, I am still sick. Therefore, if you notice something different about my voice, that's probably what's causing it. And before we begin, I should mention I'm not 100% sure if this is the best possible build that you can use for hunting Fatalis. This is the build that I used to hunt Fatalis after a lot of iteration and a lot of hours uh, hunting fatalis repeatedly and i believe this to be the build that i probably get the best results in but having said that you know fatalis is still kind of like a fight that you go through and a lot of times you still uh you still struggle with it you don't always at least i personally don't always go into the fatalis hunt and be like yeah this is going to be easy win and in, in my opinion that's a really good thing okay this is the build that i used during my guide because i wanted to make sure that i used the build that did not use fatalis pieces because i'm pretty sure that most people once you start getting pieces of fatalis and you start building a set that particular set is going to take over like 90% of uh, all of the other sets in the game because there's just so much versatility and power in the Fatalis set that quite simply very few things can actually compete with it. So uh, let's take a look at it and I will try to guide you guys through all of the decisions that I've made. So starting things off, we have the Elytreon Star. Like I said, I'm doing a Sword and Shield. Uh, one of the main reasons why I went with the Sword and Shield as opposed to the Gun Lance, which is what you guys know that I like to use a lot is because planting the wyvern stake blast in fatalis was just like burning me out completely like you make one slight mistake you misjudge one slight opening and boom that's like that's your whole run it's gone because you got 30 minutes to kill him and you're gonna spend like 10 of them trying to put the wyvern stake blast into fatalis in a position that you can actually hit the damn thing and that was just like burning me out to a ridiculous extent so i was like dude i'm just gonna equip a sword and shield and go to town and the alatron star is uh the perfect candidate because you got a lot of purple sharpness uh which is really good particularly because it also has a lot of elemental damage and it's got uh, still two tier two slots, which allow you to put in uh, a couple of good decorations. So really, really good in my opinion. I went ahead and I augmented it with affinity increase, health regen, and element status effect up because I like to have a comfortable set. Uh, you can do different things. You might uh, put uh, attack instead of health regen because we are using three piece Safi and that will enable you to then bring in something like uh, Fuhrer decorations if that is something that you want. But personally, I like it like this. I like going overboard in survivability, particularly in a fight like uh, Fatalis. Although, you can't get too comfortable in this particular fight because it's only 30 minutes, as we all know, right? Now, uh, in the two slots that we have for the Alatreon Star, you're looking at a Challenger decoration and a Destroyer decoration. So then we have a three-piece Safi, and I went with the Crested Crown, Crested Chest, and the Crested Boots. The reasoning behind that is because I wanted to get the attack boost that we get in the Ascadora Arm Guards and the Ascadora Might. So that is going. those two pieces from Alatreon are going to put us straight into plus six attack and on top of it they're going to convert part of our um part of our elemental resistances into additional damage now i'm not really leaning too heavily on that uh in the in the first kill that i did of alatreon i was i i had like a ton of dragon damage but to be honest right now those two pieces are mostly there because of the attack up the anything else that they give is just like a nice little added bonus okay now, in terms of uh, decorations that we're putting on here on the Crested Crown, we got Destroyer Vitality, Fortitude, and Vitality. And you guys are like, okay, so wait a minute. What's with the Destroyer decos? As I've mentioned in my guide, you're going to have to break uh, at least one of Fatalis' horns in order to make Phase 3 a little bit easier. Because if you don't break one of the horns along the way, then your Phase 3 is going to be a lot harder. So keep that in mind, and that is the reason why we have Destroyer Decos in here. Then Fortitude. Why Fortitude? Because uh, I feel like sometimes some stuff just happens in the Fatalis Hunt, and you're just going to get carded. And if you're going to get carded, you might as well come back a little bit stronger. So I personally tend to, whenever I'm doing him solo, I tend to cart a lot. As a matter of fact, I always start my hunts by eating for Safeguard. 
because I, I already know that it tends to happen. And you guys, you guys can say, oh my God, Rurikan, come on, I thought you were really good at this game. I never said I was good. I'm decent, okay? I'm decent at Monster Hunter. Just like a lot of people always like to call me a Souls veteran, like I've been through the war. It's like, I'm decent at Souls. I've always said that. I never said that I was amazing at Souls. But uh, yeah, Fortitude, really good skill to have just in case you cart, uh, but I don't necessarily go out, you know, killing myself twice and then beginning the actual hunt. I mean, I kind of did that on my very first kill, but that's not what I do anymore. Uh, then on Safi's Crested Chest Beta, we have Heavy Artillery Jewel Plus 4, and I heavily recommended this in my uh, guide and the reasoning behind it is because there's quite a few uh, siege weapons in that space and so for instance if Fatalis happens to be flying and there's nothing that you can do then you can just go up to a ballista and fire a couple of ballista rounds into him and they will deal considerably more damage than if you did not have that heavy artillery. The other reason is the roaming ballista. The roaming ballista can deal a ton of damage. Uh, the starting salvo with the cannons that you can do by using a ghillie mantle can also deal a lot of damage. So heavy artillery is just a decoration that I like to bring into the fight. I'm not the biggest fan of using siege weapons. Let me tell you that right from the get-go. But for this particular encounter, I'll use every trick in the book and then some because I just don't care. I I'll kill Fatalis by all means necessary and with extreme prejudice. That's how that encounter goes. Anyway, then we have another challenge jewel then on the escadora arm guards we have uh the rest of the challenger stuff and then on the escadora might we have tenderizer vitality and attack jewel one to max out attack then on safi's crested brutes uh boots we have expert jewel plus four tenderizer jewel two and expert one and we wrap everything up with the master's charm the master's charm is going to be getting an upgrade i assume on the 16th i noticed that there it's some kind of a blue ticket that i haven't been able to get yet i don't think that event is in the game at this point but the event will come later during the uh the spooky fest or whatever the fright fest i think is what it's called uh and we'll be able to upgrade master's charm to plus five but for now all we can get is four the main reason i have to use that charm is because i missed out on getting the expert jewel yes i i put out a video specifically to warn people not to miss out on this jewel and then i messed up because i logged in and i didn't save and i closed the application because i'm an idiot and you can say it in the comment section i deserve to hear that anyway continuing onwards when it comes to mantles we have the temporal mantle and the rock steady mantle on temporal we have maintenance so that it makes rock steady come back faster and on rock steady we have protection because naturally if you're going to go unga bunga you might as well get a little bit of damage reduction to go with it but these are not the mantles that i begin the encounter with if you've watched my guide you know that i begin with the temporal and the gilly mantle but it's just, you know, after fighting for a while, after doing the initial salvo, I'm probably going to go back and get my, my rock steady mantle because, you know, I like going ham on Fatalis. And here's the cool thing about this particular set, right? I'm not using Safi for damage bonus or even uh, affinity. Like, those are nice things. But one of the really cool things about Safi is that regen. After you get a couple of hits in, you start regening, and that is extremely useful because a lot of times you can just go in with temporal and heal yourself without necessarily having to go for uh, a max potion or uh, a mega potion. You just like you heal from hitting your target. Uh, combined with health regen, it gives you a ton of health regen, and then on top of it. You also have the 20% affinity, the additional element, and like in terms of elemental damage, the weapon that we're using is now slouch either. So all of that stuff is good. And that's the reason why we went three-piece Safi, two-piece Escadora, and why we picked Altrion Star, because it doesn't have that much maintenance needed in terms of sharpness, so you don't need something like a Master's Touch or uh, a Sharp Deco or anything like that, which makes this very comfortable while at the same time extremely offensive towards Fatalis. Th that's why those picks were made. Now let's take a look at the final build. And as you guys can see, we got Attack Boost Level 7, Critical Eye Level 7, Agitator Level 5, Health Boost Level 3, which as far as I'm concerned might as well be mandatory for the Fatalis fight. Dragon Resistance level 3, we did not gem for this, this comes from the Escadora armor pieces. Critical Boost level 3 and Weakness Exploit level 2, and you guys are like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're missing one point in that their weakness exploit. Yes, that is because if you wound, which you will notice if you see footage of me fighting Fatalis, you'll notice that I wound often. If you wound Fatalis, uh, then you're going to hit the... Not sure if you hit 100% or 95%. I think you hit 95% with this set. 
Um, so you will crit often. It's not really a big problem. You don't need that last point of weakness exploit. I would love to have a uh, tier three part breaker. And as a matter of fact, some of you might be like, I'll just take one challenger jewel out and put part breaker in. That is perfectly viable. That is a hundred percent viable. Uh, it's just usually I can get the results that I need like this. So I really don't want to change it around too much. Then we have the Heavy Artillery 2 for handling all the Siege Weapons. Blight Resistance 1 comes from one of the soft beat pieces. Uh, Fortify, we have one Evade Window. I really wish I had more, but it's just like, you only got 30 minutes. So I'm putting a lot of stuff into offensive things. You got your 2 Divine Blessing whenever Rock Steady is up, and your 2 Tool, tool Specialist whenever uh, Temporal is up. You got your Dragon Vein Awakening and your Element Conversion. And that is the build that I use. Now, in case you guys are wondering and you want to adapt this to a different weapon, uh, my advice would be to potentially remove the Challenger decorations, and that'll give you a little bit of wiggle room there. Also, depending on the weapon that you want to use, that might also give you a little bit more wiggle room. Uh, some of the most important skills in the set, I would say, is probably the Fortitude, Heavy Artillery, uh, and the destroyer decos. Most of the other stuff is standard stuff and you can kind of like adapt this to whatever weapon you want. This is what I used, but like I said, pretty much as soon as you get your first uh, Fatalis kills under your belt, uh, you're going to be replacing most of your set uh, for the Fatalis set because it's just, <laughs> it's broken. And I'll be making a video uh, talking specifically about that uh, in the near future. But for now, uh, since a lot of people were asking me about the build and all that, um, here you go. I also received some requests for the uh, clutch cannon build that I used in... Um, in the uh in, in my first fatalis kill like i will share that build with you but i just want you guys to know i'm not entirely sure that build was viable you need to understand what my objective with that build was at the time when i did that th the only reason that build went out there is because i was going out there to die to proc fortify that was the only reason i went out there with that build and i was just like well if i'm going out there to die i might as well deal as much damage as i possibly can before i go out so I did not actually test the clutch cannon uh, on that, but uh, you know, maybe it'll work, out, it'll work out for you guys, maybe it won't, uh, but either way, here you go. Let me just get to the decorations and boom. This is the uh, clutch claw build that I used uh, on Fatalis whenever I was just, you know, going in there kamikaze style to um to trigger fortify it's very much a crit draw build i this i did not i was not the one that came up with this build this i believe this was a japanese player came up with this to hunt falconas and this is incredibly powerful to hunt falconas this is like in my opinion out of all the builds that i have right now i even have geology on it because i've been using it uh, to hunt falconas you can replace that geology with a quick sheath jewel uh so that you get level three quick sheath but yeah, this is the uh, the clutch cannon, and basically with this, all you do is you clutch onto the monster and you press triangle. That's it. That's that's the whole strategy behind this thing. And if you get caught in a bad attack, then too bad. <laughs> that's, because that's what this web that's what this build does. It's a one trick pony. You you get in there, you clutch, you shoot, you get out. Uh, I know that some of you guys were asking about this build, so here you go. I actually changed and that put uh, the uh, the frost fang bases. Vambrace's beta. I haven't even I haven't even uh, checked if that has any effect on the build whatsoever. I don't know if that uh, increases its damage or not. But it's just one of those things. This is not a build that I personally pay too much attention to. It's just something for fun. Okay. So if this helps you guys out, uh, then sure, go ahead, use it. Either way, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you did not enjoy this video, hit the dislike button because feedback is important. If you usually enjoy my content, subscribe, bell notification icon, all of that jazz. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay strong, stay safe, peace out.